So we've got a $2 million cash game bot. That's pretty sick, to be honest. So this is a 2,000, 4,000 game with a $4,000 big blind ante, it seems. So let's see what happens. So Jason, Jason Kuhn raises to 11k here with an 8k straddle in there. So he's basically he's basically taking control of the pot, knowing there's three people out there who, who have put in money dead. So he's going to raise a little bit of a wider range, and Ace Queen is obviously within that range. All right, so Jason Kuhn opened 11,000. This is not a straddle pot, just 2,000, 4,000, or 4,000. And Nikita Budziakowski is in a in a is in a tricky spot. I'm not sure which position he is. I believe it's a cutoff. So nine eight suited would be a little bit of a loose play. You know, it would be loose at three bet that against hijack, even with the anti in there. Flat calling would be quite loose as well, but it would be okay. You know, depending on who's behind them, how good your opponents are, how aggressive they are. So you know, pretty close spot uh, for him. I, I wonder what he's gonna do. And then when it gets to Mr. Callus, I assume he's going to squeeze his pocket tens every time. Nancy. Kane Callus is going to squeeze. So, so Nikita called the 98 suited in the small blind. Um, I definitely am not a fan of this play, but he did make the play. And it's hard to criticize him because he's such a good player. And Kalia has an easy squeeze. He has to think that if Nikita had... 10s plus or jacks plus, he would have he would have three bet pre flop. Jason Kuhn is going to play a fairly wide range with the anti in there, so you know tens is a hand that doesn't really want to play multi way out of position. So I li I like squeezing here, and also you have Paul Fua to worry about. Not when he's got Queen for offsuit, but you know he is uh, he is still left to act. Squeeze with pocket tens right now to fifty five thousand. It's kind of like the first uh, pot he's three bet. Jason Kuhn of Ace Queen might feel this is a tighter range, but might still feel a little obligated to see a flop. So he is gonna actually four bet here to 120,000. His read is that Callus is just gonna play very straightforward. So Jason Forbets here to 120k, um, which I like more than a, than a call. You know, if you call this hand, your hand is not so playable. I mean, it it just bad things, good things don't often happen when when calling three or four bets with Ace Queen off suit. Uh, that doesn't mean you should never make the call. Of course, uh, you can sometimes call, but. Okay, Mr. Callus' range is a little bit tighter in this spot. So I actually like the 4-bet here quite a bit. You have to be careful that you don't do, do this every single time with hand like Ace-Queen or even Ace-Jack because then you're a bit out of line. But sometimes 4-betting here makes sense. So I like it. And then pocket 10s are usually a call here. Well, in theory they are. Um, if your opponent is extremely nitty or the sizing is way too large, I could see an exploit of the fold. But against a good aggressive player like Jason Kuhn, I think calling is the right play. And it's important that you call all types of hands, right? You're calling hands like ace-queen suited here. You're calling hands like, for instance, maybe eight-seven suited or pocket tens or maybe jack ten suited. So you're going to hit all kinds of different boards. You're even, you can even call a hand like aces here sometimes. You know, if you call here, the pot's going to be a little bit over 250k. So it wouldn't be the worst, uh, worst hand to call with, having, uh, having uh, less than three times the pot behind. So, But let's see what he does. This is Kane's first three bet. He's been four bet. So I think Kane's gonna try and see a flop. 120,000 euros each in there. So Kale does make the call, which I, I like. I mean, the pot's already huge, right? So. 
yeah, as you see, I mean, slow playing aces would be the would be the right play sometimes, but he has tens, unfortunately. So these low cards don't really hit anybody. I mean, Kale is Callus is maybe gonna call a hand like six seven suited or eight seven suited. Um, you know, but still, 8-7 is an open end there, and 6-7 is one pair, so those would be higher equity hands, but they wouldn't be amazing. Um, Jason Kuhn is not going to be forward bending hands, any hands that connect with this board. Maybe he'll have, like, ace-4, ace-5 suited, I guess, but, you know, he, he's mostly representing aces, kings, queens here, ace-king, and, you know, some bluffs. So he gets to be pretty aggressive on a board like this, because, as I said, nobody really hits this board. So Jason bets about half pot, um, which is, which is all right. Most people tend to bet smaller, but I see his reasoning. He's probably thinking that he needs a bit of protection on a board run out like this. And uh, Callus is in a pretty tough spot, right? I mean, check raising all in seems a bit aggressive. Check raise folding seems a bit strange, you know, just calling. I mean, your hand is too strong to fold, but, you know, too weak to raise. The issue is that when you call with a hand like tens, you know, it's very difficult for good things to happen, right? Because unless you turn a 10 or let's say a six, but even if you turn a six and Jason keeps on betting, you're kind of just hoping he has what he what he has right so yeah you're in a really horrible spot i expect to see a call i wouldn't be surprised with a call it's a really ugly spot i can't imagine callus doing anything with calling i remember we had i remember we had a triton there and like a week after or something there was some shooting in casinos and stuff yeah 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 So it's going to go for calling chips. Understandably, tens get called on the flop, so let's see the turn. Comes the turn. turn. Kuhn has 24% chance to win the spot. Look for an ace or a queen. The turn's a ten, so... 24% he does not have anymore. He's got 0% equity, so I mean... I said it's it's difficult for good things to happen when you call 10s here. Well, unless you turn exactly a 10, right? So, I mean, this is just super, super lucky. Uh, at this point, you know, you probably just want to let Jason Kuhn keep on betting. You know, it's very difficult to check raise all in against, uh, ag against any type of draw, right? Or with any type of draw. So, if Jason were to bet again, just call and then trap himself if he does have a hand like ace-queen or ace-king or, you know, who knows, hand like ace-four. Maybe hand like king-queen he'll have. Let's see what he does. I wouldn't like a lead on the turn. I think he should just check. Top set for Callus. He's got a 100% chance to win here. Should just keep checking. Trying to let Kuhn barrel him off a, of a pair, I suppose. You're, you're making me scared of your play, Scott. Really, like, stop playing for the whole idea. No, it's all right. You know? Uh -huh. It's more of you know? I think Kuhn's got to be careful that Kane has like pocket jacks or pocket queens a lot, and I really don't think he's going to fold those hands. He actually has top set. So Jason pretty quickly bets 160k. He's thinking that he blocks pocket queens, which is one of Callus's best hands, and you know he's hoping to get a fold out of hand like you know maybe. A hand like ace queen as well, or maybe a hand like pocket jacks, maybe a hand like pocket nines, uh, maybe a hand like ace king even. So I understand the play. You know, it's it's difficult to have a lot of obvious bluffs here. So he picks a hand like ace high and turns it into a bluff. So it's a pretty strong play. Again, you can't always do this. Uh, you know, you can't just always take any unpaired hand and turn it into a bluff. You have to be selective. But uh, you know, I don't mind this. So good play. And I'd like to see Callus just call. You know, as I said, you're quite far behind on a board like this because Kuhn can so easily rep queens, kings, and aces. And you can rep queens, but kings and aces not so much. You know, you do have pocket tens, I suppose. Well, he actually does have pocket tens. So, 
Um, you know, he's still quite far behind, except for with the, this hand. So I'd like to see him just slow play. Let uh, Jason Kuhn hang himself. Let's see what happens. Jason Coombe betting 160,000. I feel like he's betting like this to shove the river at the blank. Trying to represent aces and kings. So Kane calls again. I don't really think Kuhn expected Kane to fold the turn too much. So I hope Kuhn has a plan. Kane is obviously trying not to dance because he kn he knows that, you know, either Jason's bluffing or he's got kings, queens, or aces, and, you know, he's going to get all the money no matter what. Maybe on, like, a king or an ace, he won't get the money out of queens, let's say, but most of the time, he's going to get his stack. So he's obviously, you know, he's uh, he's all, he's ready to call his mom and tell her what happened. 839,000 euros in there. People are being a little bit more quiet now that his pot's getting bigger. River's an ace. That is a bad card for Jason Kuhn. He so the river's an ace, and it's a very interesting card. Um, Kane should definitely just end up checking. I, I'm not sure if his name is Kane or Kale. I guess Kale is a, is a vegetable, so we're going to call him Kane. I'm pretty sure he, uh, he's Kane. Sorry, Kane, in case I, I had it wrong. Um... So, Kane should just be checking here. I mean, uh, Jason is going to play hand like aces like this a lot, and it's difficult for you to have an ace, right? So, maybe you check all twice with a hand like ace king. Maybe you have a hand like ace five. So, you're going to hit this ace occasionally, but not as often as Jason would, right? So, you should just check it to him, hope he represents it, and obviously, you know, call. You might think you can value shove this hand. And then Jason's spot is very interesting too now, right? So he's got top hair, he's got a decent kicker, and he's wondering, can I shove the river? So he's got to think, well, what am I what am I beating, right? I'm beating and like jacks, I'm beating queens, I'm beating perhaps kings, perhaps and like six, seven suited. Um, but I'm losing to a hand like potentially ace king, I'm losing the tens, and I'm maybe losing to a hand like aces, right? If if Kane does slow play, five six suited maybe, but again, that's you know it's pretty unlikely. So he's he's got to figure out like, am I winning enough? Like obviously, if if Kane has Jason beat, he's always calling, right? But if if Jason does have Kane beat, he's not a, Kane is not always calling with a worse hand. So if Kane has jacks, like sure, he probably plays jacks in his way quite often. But does he call the river on exactly the ace? You know, that's pretty tricky. I would say all in all, this is probably not gonna be a shove. Um, yeah, I, I think this is a very close spot, but I think it's not going to be a shove. I think a hand like ace-king, you could probably end up shoving, you know, because Kane, Kane just squeezed preflop, right? Which he would do with ace-king as well, and then he would probably call the four bet, being super deep. If they were less deep, he'd probably just go all in, but... And then he would always check all the flop, and then on the turn, he's thinking, well, I block aces and king, so he might just call again. So Kane is going to end up with ace-king on the river a decent amount of the time, right? And you do lose to that. Plus tens, plus occasionally aces, plus the fact that Kane probably never calls with jacks or queens on the turn, uh, on the river, because, I mean, what are Jason Kuhn's bluffs on the on the turn, right? They're mostly ace-queen, ace-king, maybe even like king-queen or queen-jack, but that's less likely. So, yeah, I, I don't think Jason can shove this river. We can make it a bit more technical but with more math, but I'm not going to bore you guys too much. Let's keep it a little bit casual. So, I th I think it's a close check behind. If you had ace king, I think it's a close shove. So, but let's see what Jason does. Kane is loving this card because this is a good river card to bluff at. Also, Kuhn might actually have ace king or ace queen. Kane should check. Week. I, I'm not sure why Kane is thinking here. He should just check. I don't think it make much makes much sense to lead anything. 
Um, so, you know, guys, uh, this actually, I think, makes you look a bit weak sometimes. Not here, but sometimes it makes you bit, look a bit weak. If you know you're never going to donk, donk in any spot, just check immediately, right? Like, you don't have to balance your your timing when when all you're going to do is check anyway now if let's say let's say you're in a tough spot and you or something's going to bet something's going you you check take your time right but I, I mean i don't think that kane should ever lead here so just check immediately it doesn't make you look weak right you would automatically check tens you would automatically check aces as well as a you know weaker hand like jack so just check weakness try to make it look like you have jacks or queens that is scared of the ace And actually, I'm, you know, I was ranting about Kane's uh, lack of checks. I think he may have checked. I saw the timer on the right saying 34 seconds. So I thought he's already, I think he, he checked very late, but maybe he checked immediately. Who knows? Anyway, don't wait with a check, guys. And Jason shoves immediately. That makes me think that Kane did check earlier because Jason would have to figure this out, right? I mean, this is a very tough spot. He would have to figure out whether or not he can actually value shove. So he probably took that time and already made it made his decision. And Kane should obviously snap call, right? I mean, uh, yes, you can occasionally lose to aces, but if he's got aces, he's got aces. You just got to put the got to put the money in. I mean, if you don't call tens, you're calling nothing but the nuts, right? And Jason can even have an like ace king or apparently ace queen for value. So let's see what happens. So Jason Kuhn shoves all in and well we already knew what was gonna happen right pain pain on the face of jason coon who is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet in poker so 1.8 million euro pot that's an over two million dollar pot that's pretty sick really sick so at the end of each hand guys in case you haven't uh watched our streams or seen our youtube videos we rate the hand so out of 10 i would give kane a I'd give him a nine and a half out of ten. I mean, I like the squeeze pre-flop. I like the call against the four bet. I don't mind the flop call. Uh, I like the turn check call and I like the river check call. So you know, it's not the most difficult hand in the world to play, but he did everything right. So props to him. You know, uh, I don't know too much about him, but he, you know, he seems like a good player. And Jason, I like the four bet pre-flop sometimes. I like the see bet on the flop. The turn is a bit closer, but I really don't mind it. On the river, I think he makes a small mistake by shoving. But I do like the fact that he doesn't immediately check behind and, you know, act scared. But he actually thinks it through and figures he gets called by worse more often than done by better, right? So maybe Kane is a gigantic calling station that I just, and I just don't know about it. But I think at least in theory, this would be a, a close uh, check behind. So I'll give, K I'll give Jason Kuhn an 8 out of 10. So pretty good ratings, right? What do you guys think?